This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I'm on my way now. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new around here, my name is Trevor and this is Anna. We are the Delightful Travelers. Make sure to hit subscribe and click the little bell to follow along on our Caribbean adventures now. Yeah, we are officially in a new country. We're often not sure, especially on these Caribbean islands, but Antigua, Barbuda, definitely its own country. Today we are in Jolly Harbor and we happen to be on Jolly Beach. Isn't that a wonderful name? This is Jolly Beach. I'm gonna like this place. This is the beach we've been waiting for. If you've been following our adventures, we did run into a little bit of bad weather. The last place we were in was Anguilla, which was absolutely stunning, but they had just had a bad storm and the beach didn't look quite the way it's supposed to, but this, this is glorious. I think it doesn't get much better than this. It's funny, with the color of the water and the color of the sand, I'm actually squinting even with my sunglasses on. It's so bright. This is one of those beaches that is right out of your dreams, right out of a travel magazine. The color of the water is out of this world and the sand, oh my. Here's the thing about Antigua. There are 365 beaches here on this island. That's right, there's a beach for every day of the year. <laughs> Today we're on this one. So one of our biggest challenges when we're traveling is that we're often planning things very, very close to the time that we're traveling. I know a lot of you guys probably plan things a year, six months out, and you have lots of time to plan and figure out what you want to do, where you want to stay. For us, it doesn't always work that way because we are kind of traveling full time, although we're based in the Dominican Republic. Anyway, what I would point was often it's hard to figure out what areas you want to stay in, especially on an island like this. It's not a huge island, but it's big enough so you have uh, the main city, which is St. John's, and there's also English Harbor, and there's also a bunch of little towns around, and we want it to be somewhere kind of central where we could walk to a beach, walk to various amenities, have restaurants, have a supermarket. So this area has that, and we'll be showing you around today. And we will, we'll, I think, in upcoming videos, also visit some other areas of the island. Yeah, here's the best part, and they're probably noticing, there is not many people here. If I look this way, you'll see umbrellas down there. We'll take them that way. A few people walking by, right now but honestly this yeah, is crazy on this beach it seems like everyone's kind of concentrated on the lounge chairs and then you have the rest of the beach kind of all to yourself so if you're wondering where antigua is located it's in the middle of the caribbean very close to guadalupe and montserrat and get this there's a hundred thousand people on this island so it's not a small island there's actually way more people here than i thought but we also have a little fun fact about the country it's actually one of the smallest countries in the world and we had to look this up it's the 14th smallest country in the world. So for those of you that follow along week to week, you might be wondering how we got here. Like how did we fly from Anguilla to Antigua? Because they're kind of, dare I say, two random islands. It's not easy to get from that island to this island. Well, we actually hopped aboard a little eight-seater plane and we were pretty much the only ones on it. We could see the pilots. There were snacks and we had some incredible views. The flight was only about a half hour. I didn't mind it at all, did you? I didn't. I was really, really nervous at first knowing that it was such a tiny plane, but it was actually really comfortable. It didn't feel overly shaky or anything. No. It was $200 per person. It was actually a, a private plane company called Tradewinds. It was not a private plane. They do some chartered flights here and there and they happened to do one from Anguilla to Antigua. So yeah. not too bad. I mean, the price definitely wasn't cheap, but some of the prices around the Caribbean are so expensive. You're looking at five hundred, six hundred, eight hundred dollars to get from one island to the next. So two hundred seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, not, we almost had it private. Not too bad for the Caribbean. We was only one other person with us. It was just five of us on the plane. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was. It was an adventure. And we've taken some small planes before that were a little more rickety, might I yeah, say? Definitely. A little more scarier, but this was really fun. Yeah, let us know in the comments what's the smallest plane you've ever been on. So if you're wondering just some of the logistical stuff about this country, basically English is their language, it's the official language here, so you'll get by totally fine. Uh, their currency is the Eastern Caribbean dollar, but USD is taken everywhere. And often on the menus it's in USD or, or in the Eastern Caribbean, uh, but we've only been paying in US dollars and not had a problem at all. They do drive on the left-hand side of the road. I think in an upcoming video we might rent a car, so that could be a little bit of an adventure. Speaking of adventures, what's this over here? Hello, we're here for some coconuts. <laughs> so the price of this is uh, $9 to get it with rum, 7 without. <laughs> She's chopping the, uh, the 
coconut right there. Big machete. This is super fun. We didn't even know this was here. Completely random. <laughs> you excited for your coconut? I am. <laughs> Who doesn't love a fresh coconut? <laughs> Alright, we're uh, pouring some rum into the coconut here. <laughs> yeah, you had to drink some off, make room for the rum, and now that was a, a pretty good pour. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Is, is it half rum, half coconut? I think it is, yeah. <laughs> that is uh, way too funny. She was completely having a nap, and she just told us when we left that the sun's way too strong, and she needs to have a nap. Continue the nap. Did you try it yet? I did. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think it's because it's strong, right? I'm pretty sure it's all rum. It tastes like all rum. I can barely even <laughs> taste the coconut in there. It was made with Cavalier rum, which is actually from here on mm -hmm. the island. So it's our first taste guys, of yep. the local rum. Yeah. Right. Oh. You gotta let me talk to you. Hey, well, oh, hello. Come on. How are you? <laughs> um, guys, I'm Glenn. This is our local coconut. Go here in Antigua and Barbuda. And we can give it you natural and we'll give you some rum. Yeah, it's that's rum what in this is. Rum? Oh, they have the one with yeah, rum. With Where you from, sir? We're, we're from Canada, but we live in the Dominican Republic. Okay, do you have Spanish? No, poquito Spanish. Okay, I'm from Barbuda. Okay, where was I? That was an interruption. He was a very nice guy, but now I forget what I said. But anyway, it was 9 USD for one of these. So again, going back to the currency thing, she charged that in USD and put a ton of rum in there. We actually haven't had lunch yet today. We haven't eaten much, so... I don't know. Hopefully, we, we might have to go really, really slow on this guy. This is and our make it easy. Uh, this is our appetizer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get any further in today's video, we just wanted to say a huge thanks to Squarespace, our longtime partner, for being a sponsor once again. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that helps you stand out and succeed online. I think you guys know by now how much we love Squarespace. We of course built an entire business around them, but we also built our own website and blog on Squarespace. They make it so easy for us to feature our travel content from blog posts. To video sections to photo galleries. The blog even has a great built-in commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes, so we can respond to all of your comments and questions. We also love how simple it is to use and understand their analytics, so we can easily tell what content pages are most visited, how many people are coming to our site, and also how long they're staying on the website, which makes it so much easier to plan our upcoming website content. Are you ready to build your own Squarespace website? Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash delightful travelers for 10% off the first purchase of your domain or website. And of course, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting creators like us. So just right off the beach here, you have this little stream and this bridge. And if you're wondering, there are some areas to buy like souvenirs and things like that, like a little, uh, like t-shirts, all the basics. But really besides that, there's not a whole lot. It's mainly just beach. I think there's a hotel this way, but uh, yeah, if you're coming here, no, this is a pretty chilled out beach. Yeah, there's a couple of restaurants. One we went to yesterday. So yesterday we tried to take the day off and actually enjoy a beach day. It was a little bit rainy, but we got to spend a little bit, but we went to the pop-up beach bar, was that it? Yeah, the pop-up beach bar. It was a good spot. We had lunch and then they gave you free chairs if you had lunch there. So that was convenient because otherwise I think a beach chair or two beach loungers and an umbrella are about 20 to $25 for the day. 25 bucks. So not as cheap as the DR, <laughs> but uh, definitely not as expensive as Turks and Caicos. Yeah. All right, we found some uh, more souvenirs and trinkets. You gonna get anything? I don't think so. I haven't really <laughs> bought anything on this trip, and we're not big souvenir people. If I shop, I usually just get some jewelry or something, but really, these videos are a souvenir <laughs> for us. Yeah, there's quite the crowd over here though, right? Oh, yeah. So I don't know what's happening there. Well, I bet you there's a lot of cruise ships that come to this island. Do you think there's some cruisers here? Uh, yes. Actually, I looked at a cruise ship schedule yesterday. What did I say? There were four cruise ships in today? Yeah. Yeah, crazy. L luckily, it's a big island, so yeah. there's beaches for everybody. Yeah. Right off the beach, you have these like townhouses that are more or less on a marina. So I guess if you lived here or stayed here, you could like pull your boat right up to your house. Funny enough, we almost rented one of these. We had family members that just about came down to, to meet us, to spend some time here with us, but the logistics just didn't work out with the timing. But I keep thinking, oh, if they were here now, we'd be staying over there. It would have been fun. <laughs> that would have been so much fun. But yeah, look at this, you guys. Like there's someone's boat and their place there. And there's multiple kind of areas. Like there's another dock, little boat, one kind of here on the side. We need a boat. We need a boat. <laughs> we need a townhouse and a boat. Should we move here and buy one? I'm sure we can totally <laughs> afford it. There are so many unique houses here. I definitely like that aspect about the area we're in. They're not all like cookie cutter. They're all colorful and small. Some are a little bit larger, but you guys might be wondering who comes here? Like, well, who are the main tourists by that? That's right. Yeah, I mean. so just for a little bit of context, we were just in St. Martin and then we were in Anguilla 
and we found a, a pretty big variety of tourists and Anguilla specifically was a lot of Canadians and Americans yeah. and I thought being like a territory of the uh, United Kingdom that maybe there'd be a lot of Brits there but there were not nope. but there seems to be a lot here yeah we keep hearing British accents and we yeah. shouldn't be surprised by that but again in Anguilla there I just was expected more there not. But overall, it is predominantly Americans for sure. We've heard some Canadian accents, yeah. but we mainly hear American accents. The other thing we noticed is a lot of people get around by golf cart here. Yeah, I think that's just in the marina area. We're gonna show you more of it in a little bit. So it makes sense when you see like how the layout works because there's a lot of stuff in this area. I don't think you can take it out and onto the main no. streets <laughs> through the mountains and stuff, but around here it's really convenient because it's pretty spread out. It makes sense to go to like the restaurants and yeah. the, the supermarket on a golf cart. I love it. There's, there's something about the golf do you find it makes it a little more posh or something? <laughs> it's posh, but it's, yeah, there's just something. It makes you feel like you're on like a golf course, even though you're not. <laughs> Next up, we came over to this adorable looking food truck. Take a look at this, you guys. We're absolutely starving. We got a sandwich. We'll talk about this in a minute. Also, we got this juice. This is called a citrus blast, and I believe in here we got some orange juice, grapefruit, and lemon. We'll try it. Sounds like it should be uh, a little bitter. Mm. Oh yeah, in a good way. Oh man, that is fresh. But one thing you're going to notice today is the prices. We just paid for this. You'll see it on the screen shortly, but the prices are quite high. We knew that uh, coming in, a little different in, uh, in the DR, where we're, <laughs> we're from. I'm repping the shirt today, but uh, we'll get into that. But speaking of getting into things, let's get into the sandwich. So the sandwich I got is called a French panini, and I'm a little bit bummed out because I saw a BLT on the menu, and I just wanted a BLT. You know how when you see something, you're like, yeah. And then I ordered it, and then about 10 minutes later, they said, and I paid, <laughs> they said, uh, we don't have it. So they uh, convinced me to get a French panini. Uh, there's ham, spinach, tomato, mozzarella, and avocado on this, except I said avocado. There's no avocado on this, so I'm striking out a little bit today. But uh, let's get into it and see how it is. So, I think because it's missing the avocado, it's not quite doing it for me. There's no like special sauce on here. They said there was going to be a little bit of like a basil pesto. And I mean, if there is any on there, it's not too much. So because of that, there's not a ton of flavor. You're getting like the basic ingredients. The bread's really good though. I'll give it an A plus there. The rest overall, it's just okay. For what we're paying today for this, I definitely expected uh, a little more. But I guess if you're coming here, still try it out. Maybe because they didn't have ingredients today, I'm striking out a little bit. But hopefully Anna's is a little better. So I went for the buffalo chicken panini hopefully a little bit more flavor in this I actually had to pull out the menu because there's so many things on this so there is lettuce spicy chicken cheese sauteed bell peppers sweet onions and avocado and I actually see avocado on this so I wonder oh. maybe I got the last avocado maybe they made my first and then they were out <laughs> of course that's how it went <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh, baby, if Trevor's is lacking in flavor, mine definitely makes up for it. That actually gives quite a punch. There's some spicy something in there. I think it must be the chicken. It doesn't taste overly buffalo-y to me, so I think it's really just more spicy than anything. There must be some chilies or something. I do see some little red flakes in there, so maybe some red pepper flakes or chili flakes. It's nice and cheesy. This one's really, really good. By the way, you guys might be saying, you're on Antigua, you should be having local food. Trust us. That's in the plans. We always try to plan out our videos a little bit in advance. So right now we're thinking we're going to do a full on food video. Hopefully that works out. And then we're probably going to do a thing on prices because you're also wondering, I bet you you're wondering, how expensive is this island? So we'll be talking about that in a separate video. We've just made our way down to the marina here. And question for you guys, have you ever seen so many boats in one place. It actually feels a little bit endless, but I have an answer. I think I have seen more boats than this in St. Martin. St. Martin had A for one, maybe more super yachts than I've ever seen in my life. I feel like there was between 500 and 1,000 on that island. Maybe I'm wrong. Someone can let me know, but these boats as well, there's tons of those in St. Martin. There's also tons here. So it's just interesting to see what islands have all the boats. Like why do all the yachters come here? Found a sign here, the Barbuda Express. So there is two islands. <laughs> there is. So an interesting fact for you. Here we are two islands, one country. A couple of islands ago, as Trevor just said, we were on St. Martin, which is one island, two countries. <laughs> very, very interesting. Although I did actually read that Antigua and Barbuda, there is one third island. I forget what it's called, but there's nothing on it. So it is basically three islands, but only two that are inhabited. Yeah, it looks like this must be the express boat right behind you. It's yeah. kind of a cool, cool rig, isn't it? I know. I wish I had more time to actually go over there and explore that island too, but we don't. 
take a look at this building. It looks like it's straight out of Italy. So we have some amazing architecture mixed in with all the boats. And what's really cool is this really long boardwalk. It's all made of wood. So it's very pleasant down here. Not much wind. Not much wind. It's a really nice spot. And there are a whole bunch of restaurants. Another reason that we picked this area to stay in. Uh, there's like, uh, I think we're walking by a Mexican place right now. There is an Indian place. There's just some basic like pubby type spots as well and there's Italian so it's a great spot to be if you want to be able to walk or golf cart everywhere. <laughs> so walking around here we're just talking amongst our uh, ourselves comparing it of course to where we live in the Dominican Republic and the Dominican Republic is just so big it's such a big island it basically feels like its own continent compared to this island and the other islands we've been on lately. Yeah and obviously it's Spanish so you're gonna have a little bit of that happening, you know, culture, a little more culture shock. If you Definitely going. culture shock. But it's a, it's a lot of fun. We obviously love it because we live there. It's a yeah. lot cheaper for sure. It depends what you're, you want, right? If you want a bit of that culture shock and to be outside of your element, and by that I mean we're from Canada and I know there'd be a lot of Americans watching. If you want to just go out of your comfort zone, that's why we're in the DR, but still in the DR, there's a lot of comforts. It's just Spanish, they drive pretty crazy, but overall, we absolutely love that place. The island is beautiful. These islands though, so different. Totally. So St. Martin, uh, obviously divided by two different nations. Mm -hmm. uh, one side, the, the Dutch side actually feels quite loud and a lot happening. It's and parties America. It's and almost it, like America. But it feels like America <laughs> and a little bit crazy, but not in a terrible way. But maybe if you want to avoid that, you might want to go to the French side, which is a little more sophisticated and laid back. Eclectic, yeah. bougie. So then if we leave St. Martin, but one thing we'll say about St. Martin, lots of traffic. Too many cars on that island. Yes. I'm just going to say it. there's way too much traffic on that island. Uh, then we went to Anguilla and that's way more uh, super chill. Super chill. It's also flat. So the other islands are quite mountainous and hilly. That one's very, very flat, easy to drive around. Beautiful beaches, although we didn't have the best weather for that. Um, but just like a super, if you just want to go relax and have like That's the place. The That's beach the place. <laughs> vacation and you have money for it, go for it. And now yep. here, and we are just in our first couple of days here, we've really only seen this area. So in the next few videos, we should get a better, vi a better yeah. idea of the vibe. Here. But this is like a first impressions for us, uh, first day feet on the ground and so far it feels a little bit more like St. Martin. We're just comparing it to recent places. Yeah. Definitely not like Anguilla and as we move around the island we'll kind of give our thoughts yeah, as we I go. But I would also say when you compare it to St. Martin but not the crazy like drinking no. party side of it just a, a, but a chill aspect to it as well. Yeah but and a lot of people are here too and again I think there's more locals that live here than St. Martin. I could be wrong on that but there's definitely Probably. a lot of tourists. Yeah. So interesting so far. It's mm -hmm. a lot of fun for our first day and just yeah didn't expect to be on this marina right now. <laughs> yeah. Didn't expect to be right by an amazing beach. Again there's 365 beaches know, that's on this island. Yeah. Absolutely nuts. Well we're back on the beach here for sunset. We found the most adorable little beach bar to catch this epic sunset. Uh, we grabbed a Carib. We are big fans of this beer. You can get them all over the Caribbean, just not so much in the DR where we live, but uh, we always love when we can grab these. We pop a lime in it, tastes a little bit like a Corona. But one thing we can't get over already is just how empty the beach is here right now. So we're facing west and we're here for the sunset. We fully expected, like fully expected this place to be packed with people. And what we wonder is, are the cruisers leaving? And we see some cruise ships there off in the distance and I think that's what's happening. So in the day I think this gets ex extremely busy with people and I know there's other beaches around as well but this beach maybe is one of the more popular ones but uh, at the end of the day it definitely clears out so know that if you're coming here right now I kind of feel like we got this place to ourselves it feels super chill and it's high season like not what I expected at all. I know we just ate in the video but in real time it's actually been quite a few hours since we had our lunch so we decided to go for a little appetizer here on the beach. Trevor was just talking about the beer that we got it's Carib which obviously is the Caribbean beer but they do actually have a local beer called Wadadli. We haven't actually found it on the menu anywhere yet. Hopefully we'll still find it throughout our stay and we can try it on video. But what they do have here is some Wadadli wings. So these are some chicken wings that are in beer sauce. These are these are red. They're red. I'm curious what makes them red. There must be some sort of seasoning or something in there to do that. I don't know if they're going to be spicy. I'm going to assume not being a beer batter, but you never know. We are in the Caribbean. They like their hot sauce here. I know I like the, I like the sound of some beer wings. Not even remotely spicy. I'll probably be adding some hot sauce because they did bring it to the table. That's one thing I love about the Caribbean. You rarely have to I even ask for hot sauce. They just automatically bring it when you order food. 
these are nice and yummy. There's a little bit of a sweetness to it. I don't know if that's from the beer or from something else. If they add some sugar or some honey or something like that. Interesting flavor, but way better with hot sauce for sure. Well, how about this epic sunset? I still cannot believe how chilled out it is here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's simply amazing. Here, I'll pan this way to see if I can kind of get it behind me. The camera might go haywire, but this is beautiful, isn't it? It is. So if you, any of you guys have been here before, you're from here, you spend a lot of time here, any recommendations on what are your favorite beaches, leave a comment below. But probably by the time that this video comes out, we won't be here anymore, but at least we no. can take your recommendations and other people can as well. Yeah, that's the big thing. If you leave a comment and tell everyone their favorite beach and this place, they'll maybe see it and go there because we want to know for the next time we come back. We're really, really digging this place, that's for sure. Yes, but speaking of that, if you want to come enjoy an island with us in the very near future, you have the opportunity to do so. A lot of you guys will know this already, but we're doing a group trip to Greece September of this year. I know when we when we officially launched it, we were basically a year out. Yeah. When this video comes out, we should be at the six month point. So That's crazy. if you've been holding off, if you've been nervous about it or anything, send us a message. We can talk about it, but we'll also put a link in the description below. Yeah, just uh, to reiterate, yeah. we'll say, okay, so we're going to Crete. Yes. Greece. So if you don't know much about Crete, it's the, I believe, the biggest island in mm -hmm. all of Greece. It's totally like, it's almost like its own country. Yes. Totally different. It's not like the white and blue buildings, but don't let that turn you off because there's so much to do. It looks like planet Mars. You don't have to be in super shape to do this. We're not hiking mountains. We're basically gonna go around, eat, go to monasteries, go to beaches, and have a ton of fun and talk travel with all of you guys. We get to hang out and talk about our favorite places to go yeah, to. Yeah, so as of now, there's about three months until we have to have final numbers confirmed and everybody paid up. So if you are thinking about it, now is really the time to jump on it because it gives you a it few is. months to plan, get all your money in order, get your payment plans all set up and everything. So yeah. you've been holding off. This we can your warning. also, we <laughs> have heard recently that we can get you a discount code. If you're interested, we only have a limited number. So let us know if you are, but for now, first impressions. Yeah, love it. This place is great. You can hear the waves coming in. So far, so good. It is a bit pricey. We know that. You're going to hear us talk about that. And I think some people have probably left a comment already saying, I think the area we're in, I mean, with the marina and everything, it's going to be a little bit more it pricey is. than, say, the capital. But, I mean, it's a beautiful area. Yeah. We're going to try to get to the capital soon, and we got some other ideas. This should not be the last video here in Antigua, so expect more. If you don't know who we are, it's Trevor and Anna, Delightful Travelers. Hit subscribe if you're new, leave a comment, all that stuff. If you're not new, you guys are the best for coming back every single week. We're gonna turn the camera off and watch this sunset go down and probably get some more food and live a little house. And now, believe it or not, we will eat again. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. From Antigua, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.